Today's topic is converting fractions to decimals uh, manually, meaning without a calculator. Uh, we're going to be making those conversions for sure here, and they should make some sense to you now uh, after we've talked about fractions quite a bit, uh, after seeing what is a whole, what is not a whole. Two things that you're going to want to make sure that you have down for sure is the difference between a repeating decimal and the difference between a terminating decimal. Terminating decimal just means the decimal number stops somewhere. Okay, Three tenths would be an example of a terminating decimal because there's nothing after it. It's just three tenths. Or another example, we could have 0.475. It just stops at, at the, after the 5. Nothing else continues. There's no pattern or anything like that. A repeating decimal is something that just continues in some kind of a pattern. So for instance, if my answer was 0.45445445445 off the off the board here, if it kept going 45, that would be a repeating decimal. And how I would want to write that is this. I'd want to go 0.45, put a line over it. That means that this portion of it, the 45, just keeps on repeating. Okay? We're going to see a variety of different decimal types. We're going to see terminating ones, ones that stop. We're going to see repeating ones also. We'll also see some that just keep going on forever but don't really have any kind of a pattern as well. Those will be ones we'll see too. These conversions will get to be very, very easy once we get rolling into this here. Um, but mainly the toughest part is setting it up. To change this to a decimal three-fifths, we are basically going to do three divide Five. You can also think about this fraction bar as a division sign or as a division bar. The thing that most people mess up here is how do you set up this division problem? Is it this or is it this? Now I want you to think about this for a minute here. A couple things to think about. First of all, this is read 3 divided by 5. So we want to divide by 5. We want to cut it into 5 pieces. And that's clearly this one right here, cutting it into five pieces. The other thing you want to think about is the answer to this problem should be less than one whole. Three-fifths is less than one whole. So if I look down at this one right here, three goes into five twice. That's two holes with some left over. So that one is definitely out right there. So the top one is the one we want. Now, a lot of people look at this and say, well, how do you do that division problem? Because you can't fit any fives into three. Here's how we do it. After we get have the whole number, all we do is put point zero after it. Okay, and we're not going to have remainders here. We're going to go until we're doing decimals now. Okay, a lot of people get confused about remainders. Is that the decimal they do it on the calculator? They see that they think it's the remainder. It's not. Okay, and actually we can put you know as many of these zeros after it. Keep dropping the zeros when we do the division problem. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, five can't go into three, so I'm just going to put a zero right there. Okay, That means that it couldn't go in any whole times, which is right because three-fifths is less than a whole. I'm just going to put this decimal point straight up here. Okay, uh, Zero times five would be zero, so we'd subtract. Um, there's still my three. Now I'm going to bring down my first zero. Okay, Five goes into 30 six times. 6 times 5 is 30, take away 0. Whenever we get no remainder left over, um, for the most part, we know we're done here. Okay. So my answer to this problem is 3 fifths is the same thing as 6 tenths. That is a terminating decimal. It just stops right there. We're going to do 5 sixths next, and so we're going to change that into a decimal. Remember, the last one was a terminating one. It just stopped. Okay? This one's going to be a little bit different. So again, we have our problem set up right here. We want 5 divided by 6. That's what we have right here. We know this is going to be less than one whole. This is going to be less than one whole because 6 can't go into 5. Okay? So we're going to put, I don't know, you could, I mean, you could just start with one zero and you can add them later. It's fine. Sometimes I just like to start with a few. And now we go here. Six can't go into five, uh, so that would be your zero right there. Okay. 
you don't necessarily have to do that next step where you do 6 times 0 because it's going to be the same thing anyways. Okay, so now 6 into 50 is what we're looking at. 6 into, there's my 8 right there. 8 times 6 is 48. Subtract. That's 2. Bring down a 0. Okay. 6 goes into 20. I know that's 3 times. 3 times 6 is 18. Okay. Uh, we still have a remainder, so we're going to keep going. Bring down our 0. 20 again. 6 goes into 20, 3 times. 3 times 6 is 18. Takeaway equals 2. Break down my 0. At this point, hopefully you're starting to see a pattern. 6 goes into 20, 3 times. 3 times 6 is 18. Takeaway equals 2. Okay. We've got our repeating decimal going here. It's that 3. That 3 keeps going. So we're not even going to worry about doing anything else because I automatically know that my answer to this question is going to be no holes, 0 0.8, and the 3 keeps going on. So I'm just going to put a little line above the 3 right here. This would be my answer, 0 0.83. It just keeps going. If you start to see a pattern, you've got to see it a couple of times, okay? Don't stop after, two, like after these two threes, you never know what the next one could be. But if you start to pick up on a pattern, it's probably going to be a repeating decimal. Now, you'll notice on here that I left a lot of room, and I left a lot of room for a reason. And you'll be able to see that uh, in just a second here. Okay, uh, I have four thirteenths. Okay, so we're doing four divide thirteen to see what the decimal is. Um, so I'm going to start with 4 divided by 13, which I have here, and I'll just start with my point zero because I know we're going to need it because 13 doesn't go into 4. Okay, uh, 13 into 4 is 0 times, so now I'll just do 13 into 40. Okay, 13 into 40 I think is 3, so that's going to be 39. Take away equals 1, and then I'll bring down my 0. Okay. Now, here's a step that a lot of people with any kind of division get stuck on. Can 13 go into 10? It can't. But you can't bring down another 0. Okay, You can only bring 1 down at a time. So I go 13 can't go into 10, so that would be a 0. 0 times 13 is 0. Take away equals 10. Bring down the next 0. Now, 13 into 100. Hmm, what is 13 into 100? I have to think about that for a minute. Uh, 13 into 100, I think, is 7, I think, 7 times. So that would be 70, that would be 91. Okay, take away equals 9. Okay, bring down our next 0. Uh, 13 into 90, it's got to be, that was 91, so it's got to be uh, 6. Okay, 6 to 13 would be 60 and 18, which would be 78. Take away, that would be 12. Okay, bring down our zero. I'm running out of room here. That's the point, though. I want to show you this. 13 into 120. Uh, 13 into 120 has got to be, I would figure it's 9. I think it is. It's 9. 9 times 13 is 117. Oops. 117. So that gets us, I'll just put it over here, 3 we'll bring down another zero. Okay, 13 goes into 30. Uh, let's see here, that would be 13 goes into 30 twice. That's 26. I'm not going to go any further here. Okay, It's possible that this could be a repeating decimal. It's possible. But I'm looking at the first six numbers here. I don't have any kind of pattern. Okay, so once I don't have any kind of pattern, I'm just going to leave it how it is. So if I had to write an answer to this, I might do this. I might just do 0 0.3, maybe 0 0.31, maybe I'll round it. Okay, there's a 7 there, that would say for that 0 to move up, maybe I'll just round it to the hundredth place. So I'll say that is the answer. Now if you want to write that whole thing out, that's fine. But I'll just round it off to the hundredth place so we don't have as many numbers. 
All right, here's the last example I'll give you before we do some practice ones, and this is a little different. I've got a mixed number and an improper fraction. These two are the same thing, okay? Four, four and one-third is the same thing as 13 thirds, okay? If you get one of these to start with, you can do this in two ways. I'm going to show you both ways. You can keep it as a mixed number, or you can change it to an improper fraction, and I'll show you how you get the same thing. If you keep it as a mixed number, I know that my whole number for the with the decimal is going to be 4. This is going to be more than one whole because it's more than one whole. Same thing here. 13 over 3 is more than one whole. So if we start with this first example here, 4 and 1 third, I'm just going to put the 4 down here okay? because I know that's going to be my whole number, and then I'm just going to worry about what the fraction is. Okay, So I have 1 divided by 3, which I have right here. Okay. So I'll put my point zero, 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 zero after it, okay? Three can't go into one, so I'll put my zero there and bring my decimal up here, okay? Three goes into 10, three times. Three times three is nine. Take away equals one. Drop your zero. Three goes into 10, three times. Three times three is nine. Take away one. Oop, take away nine is one. Drop your zero. Three goes into 10. Three times, we can stop there because we've got our pattern. We know that the three keeps going. So all I'm going to do is put that on the end of my whole number. Um, three, and I'll put my little line above it saying that that keeps on repeating. Now, if we do this example, it should come out to be the same thing because four and one third is the same as 13 thirds. So let's try it out. Uh, 13 divided by three. Okay, I've got it right here. Okay, I don't. I've got it backwards. Let's fix that. Okay, I need my 3 out here and my 13 here because it's 13 divided by 3. I've got to put it into three pieces. This should make a whole number because we've got 13 is bigger than 3. So 3 goes into 13. Can't go on the 1. Okay, it goes into 13. And I'll put my point zero zero because we're going to need it here. Okay, that's always a good place to start. 3 goes into 13 four times. 4 times 3 is 12. Take away equals 1. Bring down my 0. Okay, I'm going to put my decimal point right after the 4, straight up there. Okay. Uh, let's see. 3 goes into 10 3 times, which is 9. Take away equals 1. Bring down my 0. 3 goes into 10 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. Take away equals 1. Okay. Bring down my 0. 3 goes into 10, 3 times. We're starting to see our pattern. Okay, So we could go on for ages, and it's going to be the same thing. But I'm just going to write it down here. We've got 4.3 repeating. Here are four practice ones for you to do on your own. Um, kind of takes some time to do this. I will tell you that one of them is repeating. One of them is terminating. One of them just keeps going on. It doesn't really repeat. It just keeps going on. And then we've got our mixed number over here. Keep in mind, for the mixed number one, you can keep it how it is and just figure out the decimal for one half and put the two in front of it. Or you could change this to an improper fraction and do it that way. Take some time to do this and then come back to the video and check and see how you did.